Hi everyone, today we are going to study the sliding window protocol. So uh, the sliding window protocol is also a flow control protocol. That means this is a protocol which is also aiming at uh, uh, controlling the flow of data or which focuses on flow control of the data. It allows the sender to send multiple frames before needing acknowledgement. Now in our previous protocols, the stop and wait protocol we have seen that one frame is sent, then the sender waits for the acknowledgement. When it gets the acknowledgement, then it sends another frame and so on. But here the sender, in case of the sliding window protocol, the sender is allowed to send multiple frames before needing an acknowledgement. That is, it sends multiple frames one by one and then it gets an acknowledgement altogether. So it does not wait for the acknowledgement after each and every frame. So basically this allows sender to send more frames. So when you are allowing the sender to send, uh, send multiple frames, that means basically you are speeding up the process of sending the frames. So this involves sliding of sender's window. The name is sliding window protocol. So sliding window protocol, we assume a hypothetical situation we or we uh, assume a virtual kind of a window which basically decides how many frames can be sent at a given point of time size of the window whatever is the size of the sender's window that many frames the sender can send at any given point of time so we assume a virtual kind of a window now maximum number of frames that the sender can send without acknowledgement is as I said equal to the sender window size right so actually there is no such physical window this is just a virtual uh, window to help us visualize that okay this is the size of the window and this means that this is the maximum number of frames that can be sent so that is why the maximum number of frames that the sender can send without acknowledgement is the sender's window size say for example if the size of the sender's window is 7 that means maximum number of frames that the sender can send without waiting for an acknowledgement is 7 now although the stop and wait uh, ARQ automatic repeat request that we started before this protocol offers error and flow control but may cause big performance issues as sender always waits for an acknowledgement even if it has next packet ready to send. Now in the stop and wait uh, protocols that we saw, the problem was that after each frame, the sender had to wait for the acknowledgement of that particular frame, irrespective of the fact whether it was ready with the next frame or not. Even if it was ready with the next frame, it could not send it because it was supposed to wait for the acknowledgement of the frame that was previously sent. So this kind of uh, caused a hurdle in the overall process and slowed it. But here we have the privilege of sending uh, n number of frames all together without having to wait, wait for the acknowledgement of each frame. Now sliding window protocol handles this issue by sending more than one packet at a time with a larger sequence number, right? So unlike the stop and wait ARQ protocol wherein the sender was supposed to wait for each uh, for an acknowledgement of each frame that it had sent, here we can send multiple frames. In case of the sliding window protocol, we can send multiple frames all together. Now what is the working principle? Now let's look at the working principle of the um, sliding window protocol. Now in these protocols the sender has a buffer called the sending window. So the window which we call is a virtual window actually. It is nothing but a buffer. Right. So the sender has a buffer which you act, uh, are calling the window or the sending window. And the receiver also has a buffer which you call the receiving window. So the buffer of the sending window or the sender's window has those frames which can be sent all together and the buffer of the receiver's window means uh, or the buffer at the receiver side means the maximum number of frames that can be accommodated at any given point of time by the receiver right 
so the how many frames the receiver can receive depends upon its buffer size and how many frames the sender can send all together at a given point of time uh, depends upon the sender's buffer size at any instant of time the sender maintains a set of sequence numbers corresponding to frames it is permitted to send right so every frame that is sending has a unique sequence number as i told you so that means at any instant of time the sender is doing what maintaining a set of sequence numbers right sequence numbers corresponding to what obviously to the frames that it is permitted to send so all the frames that it is permitted to send it maintains the sequence number of all those frames these frames are said to fall within the sending windows right so these frames which the sender has to send and is ready to send those frames are said to fall within the sender's sending window similarly the receiver also maintains the receiving window corresponding to the set of frames it is permitted to accept so the receiving window is also actually nothing but the buffer of the receiver so the receiver is also maintaining a buffer and that buffer corresponds to the number of frames or the set of frames it is permitted to accept so if the buffer size of the receiver is 7 it cannot accept any more than 7 frames at a given point of time the sender's window and the receiver's window need not have the same upper and lower limits or even have the same size right so uh, basically the upper and lower window uh, signifies the minimum and maximum number of frames that the uh, uh, sender or the receiver should have and the size means obviously the actual uh, total number of frames that can be accommodated by the sender and the receiver so in any case the sender and window are not uh, obliged to have the same upper or lower limits or also they are not uh, uh, there is no compulsion uh, for both of them to have the same window size there are some sliding window protocols in which the windows of both the sender and receiver are fixed in size but in others they can grow or shrink over the course of time so one is the static kind of a window wherein the size would remain fixed whatsoever and one is a flexible kind of a window wherein the window can grow or shrink over the course of time as frames are sent and received so if you have larger number of frames it can grow to a certain extent if you have lesser number of frames it can shrink to a lesser uh, uh, to a certain extent so the uh, both the scenarios can be there so depends upon the protocol so in some sliding window protocols they have the fixed window size and in some sliding window uh, protocols the window can grow or shrink in the course of time as the frames are sent and received now the sequence numbers within the sender's window represent frames that have been sent or that can be sent but have not been acknowledged as yet so if uh, basically the sequence numbers which are unique for each and every frame as we have discussed earlier also so these sequence numbers within the sender's window what what do they represent they represent those frames that have been sent but their acknowledgement has not yet been received or those frames that can be sent that have to be sent right now whenever a new packet arrives it is given the next highest sequence number this is at the receiver side so at a um, this is a, so when a new packet is arriving i'm sorry this is at the sender side only so basically Uh, the new packet at the data link layer is arriving from the network layer so whenever a new packet arrives at the network uh, data link layer it is given the next highest sequence number and upper edge of the window is advanced by 1 right so if a new packet arrives the next highest sequence number would be given to this say for example till now you have three frames with uh, sequence number 1 2 and 3 so if a new frame arrives it will be given the next highest frequency sequence number which would be 4 in that case and the upper edge of the window is advanced by 1 so if by now if till now the upper edge of the window was 3 and a new frame has arrived the upper edge of the window will be advanced by 1 and it will become 4 
now when an acknowledgement comes in the lower edge is advanced by one so when acknowledgement for that particular frame comes obviously the sender does not need to keep that frame in its buffer now in the buffer only those frames are kept which have to be sent or which have been sent but their acknowledgement has not come the moment the acknowledgement comes those frames can be removed from the buffer and the lower edge is also then advanced by one so since frames currently within the sender's window may be lost or damaged in transit the sender must keep all these frames in memory for possible retransmission we know that uh, the transmission channels are prone to errors so unless the sender receives an acknowledgement for the frames that have been sent it should keep them in the memory just in case if they are lost or damaged in transit the sender can retransmit those frames so if the maximum window size is n n could be any number 7 8 9 10 so if the maximum window size is n the sender needs n buffers to hold the unacknowledged frames so as i told you the buffer is always containing the unacknowledged frames so unacknowledged frames are those frames which have been sent but their acknowledgement has not arrived or which have not been sent which have yet to be Uh, which have yet to be sent so uh, in any such case that means uh, they are those frames whose acknowledgement has not been received so the buffer will always contain the unacknowledged frames so if uh, you uh, if the sender needs n buffers to hold the unacknowledged frames that means the window size is n in that case If the window ever grows to its maximum size, the sending data link layer must forcibly shut off the network layer until buffer becomes free. So the buffer is basically the window that you are calling it. Virtually, it is the window. Physically, it is the buffer. So if the window grows to its maximum size, see maximum size if it is nine. Until now, you were having three frame, uh, three frames. Then one more frame came from the network layer above and. one uh, it became four frames the window size expanded then one more frame frame come the window size again expanded to five and so on so like this frames kept on coming in the window size kept on increasing or growing now if the maximum limit of the window is 9 and you have already had nine frames you are already having nine frames and if and now you know that the you are not ready to accept any more frames so what will the data link layer do it will shut down the network layer or shut off the network layer for some time until the buffer becomes free because from where is the data link layer getting the uh, uh, frames the sender's data link layer is getting its frame from the layer above it which is the network layer so in order to stop those frames coming it has to shut off the network layer above it which is sending the frames to the data link layer so if the window size reaches maximum say for example the window size is 9 and it has 9 fr frames by now so the moment it has the Ninth frame, it will shut off the network layer to stop receiving any further frames. At the receiver's end or the receiver's data link layer, any frame falling outside the window is discarded. Right. So basically, what is the window? The window is the buffer of the receiver. So if the receiver's buffer's maximum size is nine, that is at any point of time the maximum number of frames that it can hold is. nine so any frame beyond its capacity would be discarded or dropped off because it is not capable of holding that frame so when a frame whose sequence number is equal to the lower edge of the window is received it is passed to the network layer right so lower edge means that frame that has already been received and frames after that are coming so that means the frame that was received first has the lowest edge and the frame that was received last has the upper edge so obviously the frame that is received first will be uh, passed on first so that means when a frame whose sequence number is equal to the lower edge of the window is received it is passed to the network layer because from the lower ed edge where will it go it will be passed on to the network layer and an acknowledgement is generated and window is rotated by one right because the uh, 
acknowledgement for that frame is generated though it is not sent immediately but the acknowledgement is generated and it is then the window is rotated by one that means this uh, buffer space for that particular frame has been freed up so you can rotate the win window by one now so unlike the sender's window receiver's window always remains at its initial size 